Hi, this is Paul again. Now for part 12 of Cubic Wonder. In my last video, I showed that the flower of life seemed to show that the 3x, that's the 3 by 3 by 3 cube arrangement, seemed to be the most important. And it applied to both the Bucky and the Plato cubes. When I worked on the DNA with the Dodecas, I found that this size cube was very important because that size gives us the DNA. Because it's a 3x Plato, it provides a solo Plato in the center of its own family. And if we go to the Bucky 3x cubes, it will do exactly the same, provide a Bucky in the center. So this is a special feature for the 3x. So I'll give it a copy of about six, and this would be a typical string for a straight piece of DNA. I'll just leave the outline of the 3x and just put the solos in the center, and they can morph into the icosa and dodecahedron, just like I showed in Strings of Order two years ago. I show a diagonal of one of them cubes as 173 pico. This is an important measurement I use a lot for moving dodecas around. Okay, now we'll go back to the 3x Bucky cubes. Now when we take the corners away, we end up with a cube octahedron. What's amazing about this is that she changes into a perfect icosa. But in my previous videos, I was morphing down from a 6x to the 3x. I also found in my experiments that she'd morph upways as well, but the size of the icosa has kept the same. So I guess we can put this down to another discovery. Okay, I think we're okay now for the icosa. Now we're going to work on the dodeca, and now for the fun. You see that the cube picks up eight vertices of the dodeca, but actually it needs five cubes to pick up all the vertices. Okay, in front of you, I show the cube and I'm giving it a red outline with eight vectors. Now I show that the 3x Plato will morph to the vertices of the dodeca. But if you look at the vertices of the cube, they all stayed put. This is because I found that the vertices of the dodeca and the cube are no move vertices. In my video two years ago, Strings of Order, I called them the golden ratio vertices. Everything seemed to morph around these vertices, but the gold ones, they always stay put. Isn't that something? This cube in front is split into eight one and a half cube sections. I'll take two cubes away, but leave them a macabre. I'll start morphing without them two cubes, and then take a couple more away and do the same. Notice that the macabre doesn't alter. And he says in the ancient scriptures that the macabre is a chariot through different dimensions. Okay, we'll go back to the 3x Plato again. And then I'm going to change that 3x into a plain cube. Now I'm going to animate four more copies to the other cubic positions of the dodeca. Then I can save all these angles from the animation. It's easier because I'm not a mathematician. Now I can use them animation movements and put them on the macabre. Now again we got some interest in geometry to look at. What's more interesting is that I show a vector when there's a dual arrangement at the vertex. As each macabre is added, the vectors increase in a permutation. I'm only showing a pair of macabres in one position, but out of five, it'll go ten different ways. And the triple will also go ten ways. I learned this from a bookmaker. And four will go five times out of five. I think this is going to prove a good discovery for understanding things about DNA. Okay, I'm repeating this animation, but I'm using cubes this time. So it's easier for some to understand. For the number of cubes, I show the vectors, but I'm calling them short vectors because I'm not going straight through this time. Now look at this animation of strings that comes from that cube. I've used the eight vectors of that cube. And now I'll do the same with two of them five cubes. 
and out of all them vectors, I think it's 16, there's only one pair. And what's so special about this pair is that the both cubes are in golden ratio to each other. I've taken measurements on one edge, but I think two or three other edges will do the same. So now let's go for the vertical one. Okay, to find the vertical one, I've put an animation together to show the 10 cube pairs. Because to tell you the truth, I forgot which two cubes give you the vertical. And you can see by this little anim that it was 1 and 4 that give the vertical. Now you can see there are 10 combinations of cubes and it goes in all directions. It will go 20 different vectors. I got a feeling that this discovery will be useful in the future because each one of these strings will give you DNA geometry. Let's take a look. We'll make the original cube red and the other golden ratio one gold. We'll bring in a solid dodeca and we'll give it a couple of blue rings. Now I'll rotate the gold cube to show the 44.6 angle between the red cube. The other gap is the 75.4, making 120. Now you can see that these two cubes will give us all the vertices we need. And you can see a string of these cubes will give us the helix of A, D and A. It could probably go a greater distance between dodecas with just two cubes also. And bigger gaps between the cubes will probably stretch the DNA. Okay, so now we'll focus now on the icosa. So I'm going to bring two Bucky 3x cubes in. And these are in the golden ratio because this seemed to give spot on geometry. If you see, I've got two blue rings with no move red vertices. So when them two cubes morph into the icosa, you see the green vertices balances around perfectly around the red ones. Just like them little round Zen magnets that they show on YouTube. This is virtual reality, but I think it makes perfect sense. Okay, so now I'm going to give the icosa some plain Jane colors. Then we'll give it some blue rings for the dodeca and some red rings for the icosa. And we'll make the string a little bit longer. And because we use the icosa and the dodeca rings, we can now give it a B-type DNA. I guess this is where the major and minor groove stuff comes in, what they found under the microscope. Each blue ring will provide a horizontal rung. And each pair of red rings gives us a sloping rung for the icosa. And 120 degrees rotation is provided between each blue rung. The icosa rung gets the same 120 degree cycle. Okay, now we can just go back to the icosas and give it some red rings and that will give us the Z DNA and this goes in the opposite direction. Okay, I think this about covers now the three types of DNA geometry. It was the flower of life 3X size that give us the best results. This doesn't mean to say that all the work I've shown in DNA is not correct because the dodeca and icosa sizes all kept the same. Instead of morphing down from 6x to 3x, I was getting the same results from the 5 cube orientations and I wouldn't have made these discoveries. I've asked many a professor to review my work, but they look at my videos but never reply. I guess what I show doesn't go well with the theories on fractal chaos and hidden dimensions. Oh well, I guess it takes all types. But anyways, I'm going to call it a day now. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for watching my video.